Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And we're not in the garage, we're in Turin. In fact, we're at the Alfa Romeo Design Studios. And I'm surrounded with some legendary Alfa Romeos and drawings and details because we're gonna look at the new Alfa Romeo 33 Sedali. But before we get that, here is the car that started all. This is an iconic car from Alfa Romeo from 1967. This is the original 33 Stradale and it is the inspiration for the new car and it's been one of those cars, there's only 18 examples were ever built this car. They actually intended making 50, I've learnt today. There was a designer at Alfa Romeo in the 60s who did some most extraordinary cars, Franco Scaglioni. And some of the cars he did, if you remember the Bat cars, those extraordinary Alfa Romeos with that wings on the Alfa. Uh, and then he also did this beautiful car, 33 Sedali. This was a race car. The, back in the 60s, there was a, the CEO of Alfa Romeo wanted to go racing again. He said, I want to go, we always had this history of racing, we stopped racing, why have we done that? We want to create a racer and it was an endurance race and road race type of car they wanted to create and this is what they came up with. It has a V8 two litre engine in it producing 280 horsepower, huge amount, but it revs to eight and a half thousand RPM, something like that. And they very successfully, it, it won on its first outing. It, it was a fairly minor uh, hill climb, but then went on in competition events, but they wanted to do it as a road car. And that's the Sedali element of its name. And this is one of the 18. It was hugely expensive back in its day. And they had intended to make 50 of them, but they never quite got there at the price point it was. And racing was taking over, etc. But look at it. There's so many elements on this car that was not Alfa Romeo before. Also, I always thought there was aluminium body, that's actually glass fibre body, but it's the way has this glass canopy and the high point on the design is almost here. It's this sort of incredibly aero sort of shape to it. And the way the door cuts into the roof and it's like, they say it's like driving, uh, it's like being an aeroplane, a, or something because you have this vision or a helicopter you can imagine this bubble everything happening around you and then this tiny screaming v8 engine behind you and the other element it introduced were these amazing doors that don't actually open out you think Ford gt how they sort of open and take all the gaps in and as soon as you open the door you're sort of in the car this is all structural it's all tubular structure on here where it's an h pattern the actual how they did it but and also how they've that switch gear very reminiscent of the 60s with those flick switches and how the chassis also forms part of the seat which is a little like Kuntash it's pretty tight in there I have to say other elements this was boots um, this is Auto Delta so this was a separate division at Alfa Romeo back then and um, they were the race department Alfa Romeo once this car came about they brought them in also the famous quattrofolio on there so this is the start this is what the design inspiration was given to the team here could we do this car again a very limited run a collector type car all the elements we got in Stellantis could we reproduce this for a modern age for 2023-24 and that is what this journey all these drawings here show initially it looked as though this beautiful rounded shape was going to go very angry. One just element we just looked at this is how almost it's forgotten how the Alpha grille was put on it. It has no function, it's like a shield, but it was a lovely sort of design element, I think, adding to it. But anyway, you look here, this was the very early days of the initial design study, could they reproduce this? And it was very angular, it was very angry, this sort of shape. The curves are almost gone, especially from the front. And actually, if you look down this journey, I won't go through every drawing, but it softens off, but the signatures of those holes in the wheels, how they're gonna get those rear lights to work, that element, this, oh, we haven't gone around the back of this 33, actually. If you look at this rear, this, the two elements they wanted to do, the round lights there, I love how it's a 288 GTO look, the mechanicals all on show, the exhaust there. And then 
unusual badges, Alfa Romeo, it doesn't say anyway it's 33 Sedali, but yeah, these sort of elements they wanted to introduce on the new car, this very sharp cut off rear as well, Kasmin rear. And these are lovely, this vents out of the wheel arcs, never seen it on any other car. So those are the elements they wanted to do. Here is the original 1967 iconic 33 as they term it here and here is the new car and you can see how well they've done it with those dual apertures the screen coming back and then the rear screen it's elongated this has got a longitude v6 gearbox behind it's just modern age they have to make sure it has all the crash structures within it but that was the elements they wanted to introduce on this car so a very quick tour around the original 1967 Alfa Romeo Stadale. What we're going to do now, go next door, meet Alexandro, who is actually the design, part of the design team here, and he's going to give us a tour around the new interpretation of this car. Alexandro. Ciao. Nice to see you. Welcome. There's a work of art here to talk around. Congratulations. The, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. From my side, of, of course, from all the team, because it was an incredible teamwork. Yeah. So you arrive, you maybe you already know the historical car. This yes. is the, the new Alfa Romeo 30. That, that was a wonderful hors d'oeuvre to start for the main event, yeah. which is this car. Yeah. So when did you start on this car? When did they give you the idea? Let's see if we do today. We, we received the briefing, uh, uh, let me say, two years ago. Yeah. The, the challenge arrived very, very strong and uh, we realized that the process was absolutely uh, strong, uh, clear for the company and we received this uh, commitment, in, I think, with a, with a strong smile, Yeah, because <laughs> you can imagine. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's, it's for unbelievable. a gift for a designer, isn't it? Uh, of course, when you design a new car, you need to make your best for style, for solutions. Yeah. But as you know, today you need to respect more and more homologation, et cetera, et cetera. In this case, we respect the same uh, uh, rules, the, the same briefing, but uh, of course we are in a different level, in a yeah. different world. Well, it's freedom. At this price point, you are, you can go extreme, can't yeah. you, with the materials. Shall we start at the yeah. front of this car? So, so I can uh, show you the, the welcome of the car. <laughs> so we underline the shape, the perimeter of the light uh, with the 33 stripes. Uh, oh, okay. that represent the 32 cars and so the 33 clients that join us uh, for this project. Yes. So it's the best welcome, <laughs> I it's think, excellent. for this car. Excellent. The other element that got me when I saw it is it has a, a new look on how you do your Alfa Romeo identity. It's so strong, this area. Yeah. And now you've done it this 3D look. Yeah, uh, again, I, I need to make the comparison with the historical car. If you look at the historical 33, there is uh, a metallic piece, very basic, flat. Yes. And uh, I'm sure Franco Scaglione arrived in the last minute and said, OK, I, this is an Alfa It looks like that, yeah. We did the more or less the same, because if you look, there is not a real interaction between, between the Scudetto and the body. But in terms of uh, design, the research of the Scudetto, we did exactly the opposite. This is very deep, very strong. Yeah. Uh, look how is it complex. Yeah. So we have a layer, oh, uh, many man. layers that give the shape of the Scudetto. And if you look inside, there yeah. is our logo. Very the clever. With, the, with yeah. the snake inside. So when you see it in your rear view mirror, you see this yeah. car, you see yeah. the and Alfa Romeo symbol. By the way, symbol. if you go in the top view, it disappears. Very clever. So this yeah. is uh, our car, as you can see, it speaks the same language of the historical car, so the, the language of the sensuality, uh, the round surfaces, but well, with yes. the sun edge, every This, this is very sharp. From, yeah. from the historic car. This is a new look. Th this is the way also to maintain a certain distance from the historical car because in our briefing it was clear. We need respect. We need respect for the history. For this reason, we keep the feeling, we keep uh, the inspiration from the 33, but we want to make a car with a specific autonomy and a specific identity. Yeah. And there's jobs being done at the front here, isn't there? You're saying there's a main front radiator at the front here. Yeah. In the middle we have the main radiator and in the side we have the two supplementary radiators. For this reason, uh, again, as uh, many times I explain the ne necessary beauty in the Bellezza Necessaria, how we combine the beauty of the car, especially when it's an Alfa Romeo, we need this ingredient, yeah. <laughs> ingredient and also the necessary aspect, the technology. In the headlight, by the way, we have the air intake for yes. the radiator. We this have the slot, the aerodynamic slot for the, 
for the side this of the is, car. This is a big hole here, isn't yeah. it? And then it comes up yeah. here as well. Yeah, and this, the slot yeah. for the aerodynamic. And of course, the function of the, of the headlight. If we look this line, that you say very sharp, that is uh, integrated on the shape, on the volume, this slot that allow to the hair to go out. We, we have uh, the radiator, but we have also a luggage compartment. For uh, this that's reason, impressive. we need to remove the air. Yeah, I'm looking, there's no, so the catches are inside for the, this, this comes forward, yeah. I'm guessing. We, yeah. in this car, we respect exactly the same opening of the historical car. So the big hood, uh, go in this way we have the inches here on the lower so imagine oh, how big the house uh, okay. very very strong and visible the movement the doors open like the trend of the you will see the doors in a moment then the other interest how you've kept the historic look as much as you can on the top surfaces and then down below because yes. The speed of this, this car. This the is was, uh, this was the intention. So we um, divided in the end the car in two portions: the top and the bottom. In the top, you can see the round effect of, of the historical car. In the bottom, you can see what we need today for aerodynamic, for performances, yeah. and uh, you can see this. Uh, let me say black layer that is in carbon fiber from the front to the rear, where we have this big and uh, huge diffuser. And then. This is a lovely sculpture. Yeah. You, how you do mirrors in this country the, in the flash of the Italian. Uh, yeah, we have many ingredients again. So uh, the mirror is, uh, needs to respect the same language of the body. For this yeah. reason, is round. Is round also for the aerodynamic. But just uh, an important information. If you look at this support, if you look how yes. thin is, is because uh, we need to keep the hair from the front and to redirect the light, the, the, um, the hair on the air intake on the side. Very clever. For this reason, again, the beauty, function, uh, the turn indicator, many function in the same piece. And that's steering it uh, to direct it into the main intake here yeah. for the engine and the intercoolers. Here, if uh, just a few words about this uh, element. So you need this again for the hair. Um, for the best balance in terms of uh, language, uh, uh, the beauty of the car, this is the volume we need. But for the hair, we need something more. So we go out with uh, this carbon fiber component to keep more hair we can from Very the clever. side. Then, oh, we haven't discussed the wheel design. We ought to just discuss that. That is such a good looking wheel. You are so lucky with the dial. Yeah, yeah. Look. We, we, um, elements. we call the telephone dials, you know? Yeah. And starting from the 60, you can see in every Alfa Romeo this ingredient. Yeah. Bigger and bigger, of course, because generation after generation, we need the more hair for the caliper, for brake. And of course, we need in the, in the same way to remove the weight of this ingredient. For this reason, you can see the big hole because again, yeah. the proportion, the weight reduction, but the, the small hole to remind to the historical car. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, because that has a little ring of smaller holes, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And of course, if you look in the middle, there is this strong structure, is a, a real uh, strong structure. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we combine the style also with the technology because it's a forged wheel. Uh, uh, and so we try to make something that in the end remind to the machine, the, something that is uh, technologically strong. Part of me is surprised it's not a center lock wheel like you did on the GTA. Uh, it was a, a decision uh, very, very important in the beginning. Uh, you know, uh, this is very strong if you look at this uh, uh, mono bolt in the yeah. middle, but uh, in the end there are many, many for KO for this uh, component. For this reason, we uh, say, okay, we continue with a more traditional um, approach, but in the end, I think it's great. Yeah, uh, oh, it's, yeah it's just a surprise. So, I mean, you've done it in the past. I thought, oh, you we, might but do it. You know, in the GTA, the approach was uh, something more uh, prone mm, for tra yeah, tra yeah. Tra track. Yeah. This is not uh, only for track. This is no. for every uh, use day. Uh, and for this reason, the balance between the, uh, the technical aspect, the beauty, imagine different clients for this car. Eh? There is yeah. the younger, there is the older, and there is someone that uh, don't want to show off uh, this uh, typology of car. So um, for this reason, we 
we try to make uh, something that uh, join the taste of every single client in the right way. <laughs> it's not At easy. least there's only 33 clients, 33 isn't there? Clients. Yeah. yeah, I do wonder about 33, just because I would have thought you might keep one car. So maybe there's 32 clients and then one, <laughs> one for the... Yeah, for the museum, maybe. We, no, no, no. We, our intention is exactly this. We will make the zero zero. Uh, that will be our um, uh, test car, yeah. where we will test everything: the engine, the aerodynamic, etc. Uh, it will be the first laboratory of this uh, car, okay. and starting from the zero zero, that will uh, arrive in the museum after uh, the test. And maybe journalists get to drive it. Maybe. Maybe. It may be. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, no, good idea. Now. Around at the back. Just something also I loved on this, which I didn't see in the fo original photographs. You have these sharp lines every now and then. It just yeah. gives it a modernity feel. It's, exactly, yeah. exactly like in the front. Nice, strong, sensual volume, but yeah. braked with this line that disappear in the front and in the rear. Uh, this is uh, something that we need for uh, for modernity of course yeah. for a more contemporary and something more projective uh, for the future and we need to say something here as i said before there is a car with a personal identity personal style but in the same time there is some ingredient that you will see on the next generation of alfa romeo uh -huh. i cannot tell you oh you uh, can you can what? no no <laughs> one's watching this it's fine <laughs> yeah we are only two <laughs> yeah that's interesting. So you you can see it's, ah, we we digress, but we're in an electric world, and yet you're getting a very emotional product here. Yeah, but as um, you know this car will be both endothermic yeah. and electric. But it's a bridge between the endothermic generation of cars to the totally electrified cars. Yeah. But what it was uh, absolutely important for us is the respect of the car, because the 33 Stradale, because this in the, end, in the endothermic version, you can see the exhaust, by the way, but yes. at the same time, the electrified version will be exactly the same, except, of course, we need to remove the exhaust because we don't need it, and some uh, few differences because the, uh, the uh, electric That's interesting. Car. And I've seen this discussion, you're still debating whether the electric car will just be rear drive or whether you have front drive as well. It's um, a debate. We, are, we are working on this because, yeah. as you know, uh, depends on the weight, depends yeah. on, the, on the performances. You can, uh, as you said before, we can play with the engine just in the rear yeah. or for, a, for an all-wheel drive car, also engine in the front. Is that not decided yet? Uh, there is a, a precise intention, but depends on the number of the electric car Okay. Uh, request from the client. Yes. I'm sure I cannot tell you how much, how much, but as you can imagine, a lot of people buy the car with the endothermic version because yes. in the end they want to collect <coughs> something that uh, arrive will be uh, one of the last Alfa Romeo with the classic uh, endothermic. I, yeah, I, I was, I'm hearing figures around four or five electric cars sold, but um, is the figure I'm here. And you I cannot see. see how you can <laughs> develop it. Anyway, we digress. Right, at the rear, so V6, longitudinal here, eight speed gearbox, and very interesting here. You've had to get the heat out of the engine. Yes, very clever. Uh, yes. Um, as you know, many times in every car with this typology of uh, powers, etc., we need a, a specific uh, element for yeah. the cooling. And also, the glass on the rear is a place, is an area where we need to find the way to uh, remove the hot air from the luggage yeah. from the engine compartment. But uh, sometimes you make this with louvers, yes. with some uh, graphics. In this case, we play for, uh, in a different way. If you look, the, the glass apparently is floating. Yeah. Why that? Because we want to remove the hair directly from the perimeter of the glass and not from the glass. But in the same time, we have the vertical, the longitudinal element inside that keep the hot air directly from the top of the engine. Oh, okay. And oh, okay. just uh, because I want to yes. show you this. Charlie, you want to come around. If you look yeah, at the stop. Yeah. This is our quadrifoglio a quadrif in the yeah. top, made uh, with the clever. lights. Uh, so we, we play with the volume, we play with uh, the, um, the approach on the surfaces of the car, but also with the small ingredients. Yeah. And then the other element you've um, carried over from the historic car is how you do these strange black vents, isn't it, on the 33s Tadali that look so good because they wrap around and they yeah. vent from the wheel arch and you've 
done it again here. Uh, this is uh, one of the small signature of Trenta Stradale. If yeah. you look in the back of the car, of the historical car, you can see this area with the grid because again, the necessity to remove the hot air from the engine compartment. This was absolutely mandatory for us, yes. but in a different way. So we combined more or less the same uh, graphic aspect. We combined the tail light on the back. So the tail light is made with this surface. Yes. They are, this is the, let me say, the extrusion of the round element on the back. And to represent the version where we split the, this uh, hair how take like in the Trenta Tresadar, the yeah. historical car, we play with the turn uh, indicator. Right. So we uh, made this line. If you look yeah. at the historical car, there is the body color. In this case, with the light, we divide into uh, the, um, this wow. component. Yeah, this is a beautiful color for this car. This is uh, Villa d'Este. Rosso Villa d'Este. Rosso Villa d'Este. Yes. Stunning, absolutely stunning. And you will see the car outside. The transition from the red to the black is something, yeah. something really, really incredible. Just from a personal point of view, I just think black, you would lose a lot of details on this car. You wouldn't see that visual element there. But, and that. You know, it depends, uh, yeah. because it depend, depends on the taste of every single client. Uh, we offer three colors, um, the Rosso Villa d'Est, of course, the matte red, like in the historical Trenta Tre, and the blue reale, that was one, only one Trenta Tre was made, was painted with this oh, blue. blue. Yeah. But every client can select a different color. Of course, with the range, we give it the limit of this range because we don't want uh, pink uh, cars <laughs> or something like that. Uh, but for every single client, what is amazing is that every single client see in the car something different. Yeah. In this case, for example, is the Tributo version, is the Tribute version, so very close to the historical car. But if you make this car black, the different wheels, the different interiors, suddenly the car is something totally different. Yeah. It's, not, it's less elegant, it's more sporty. And another really important style element of this car are the doors and the way that the glass comes into the yeah. roof, doesn't it? So, first of all, just uh, some few words about the layout of the doors. So the, the opening is absolutely important because we receive the same layout of the historical car. So yeah. and the axis of the rotation is diagonal and the, the opening is very, very nice for the egress and for the ergonomic. Yeah. In Italian, we say elytra opening. Is oh, dihedral. dihedral. I call dihedral, dihedral. dihedral. doors. Yeah, dihedral it's doors. like a Ferrari Enzo. Yeah, right. and this is absolutely something amazing. Uh, you can see this is a graphic uh, is uh, something very, very integrating the style, the proportion of the car. When you look at the car, the layout of the doors are absolutely important. But now, if you want, we can jump inside. Well, well I just, the one element I like, I can see no door handles. Yeah. yeah. Designers we hate door handles. We don't have door no. handles because we want to maintain the car pure, absolutely pure. Yeah. But we use, we use uh, this component and especially the piece connected with the door to open the door. Yeah. We have uh, just uh, an electric button, a micro switch and we open this uh, amazing I know. portion of the car. Well, that, this is a, obviously a concept car, a show car. This is, yeah, yeah, this is a mock-up. For this reason, uh, yeah. we don't have uh, a lot of functionality like in a real car. And uh, very important, look at the steering wheel. I know. No, yeah. buttons. no buttons. No buttons. You forgot you drive, the buttons. You put your hands, there are all the information in front of you. This is what you need when you drive a car, and especially when you drive an Alfa Romeo. In yeah. the center console, in the bottom yeah. and also in the top, in the I roof, know. you can okay. see. Yeah. We have uh, something that uh, we received from our past. Maybe you feel something like in an airplane. Yeah. Uh, the cloche, by the way, <laughs> is like an airplane. Yes. And again, if you drive the car, you need just the few buttons you can see on the center console. Yeah, no screen. That no was something screen. that no screen, the clients I didn't want, isn't I, it? Yeah. I have uh, a surprise for okay. you later. Touch the material. This is aluminum yeah. and yeah. brushed. Uh, you have the quadrifoglio that is the launch yeah. control button. Oh, this is launch control. Yes. Yeah. And right. please look at the, the few words you have close to the different Stop. function only Arriva. in Italian. Oh, uh, okay. So yes. we will... Uh, no, you're quite right. Telephone. Oh, you've got a telephone. I switched on the telephone with a switch. Yeah. <laughs>
Excellent. And uh, as you can see, in the top we have, of course, the Italian flag and yes. the VIN number uh, of the car. And you can choose this VIN number yes, or some the, the last, actual numbers. Uh, the last numbers, uh, every uh, client can <laughs> select the number of uh, oh, or if he needs something different. Right. A little bit of space behind yeah. the seat. You can put suit have, bags, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, we have that. two specific uh, bags for the interior. Yeah. We have the glow box that you oh, can see, see is removable. Yeah, um, very nice. Because we want to make something absolutely uh, unique, uh, okay. like the, the car in the end. Uh, you said there's a surprise when I said, oh, there's no screen. So what uh, is the surprise? Again, if you want to drive the car, what you can see is yeah. what you need. Yeah. But if you want the climate control, if you want the radio control, um, if you want to check the status of the car, there is uh, an additional display. I will show you. Sorry. There is another display. Good heavens. I didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's on all cars. So I'm controlling all my... I'm, I'm controlling ventilation on you there as well. You can control everything. Oh, you I control. see. So this is more driving, isn't this it? I've is got suspension. If you uh, drive the car, if you go in a track, if you already select your personal setting, you yeah. don't need this. No. For this reason, I you see. turn off this, you go up with the display, yeah. and you can stay concentrated Excellent. on the driving mode, let me say. That's clever. And I'm also looking, I've got a central speeder. So this is in uh, yeah, piece. Yeah, this is a, a, in this demo, you can see the different modes. And then, right. Uh, we have the, let me say, the dynamic and the racing version when the cluster is which in the middle. But what is nice is uh, if you look at the stripes that uh, yeah. uh, define the, the board yeah. of the cluster, then, uh, there is the light through the, uh, the different uh, stripes that yeah. enhance the information directly from the display. I can't help but comment on the 333 mile yeah. an hour speedo. <laughs> this is yeah, uh, it's gone. The, what we declare <laughs> and what we want to maintain this uh, number because it's absolutely important. Uh, very clever. It's a kind of mantra. Yeah. 33, 333. Yeah, it's a good speed. And you're saying these elements, the side elements, will go to carbon in the, in the yeah. actual car th itself. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I think that we, uh, if you look also in general, the materials, the component, uh, we work a lot to reduce, uh, to make uh, something very, very pure, basic, uh, and also the language of the material is absolutely important. Yeah. If you touch this, the aluminium, yeah. uh, if you touch the console and the filling, the later. It's real, isn't it? Everything is real, absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. No, lovely, fantastic. It is quite a statement car, isn't it? It is, yeah, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And uh, shame there's only going to be 33, but uh, <laughs> you might do some other cars, isn't it? It seems as though you have a taste for this coach building sort of specialist car again at Alfa Romeo. This is uh, the, the intention and is, uh, there is, I think, behind uh, an incredible potential for Alfa Romeo. Yeah. Because uh, the approach we use for this car, that is uh, the coach builder approach, like in our past, if you look in our tradition, in our history, there are many cars made exactly with the same yeah. uh, method. For this reason, uh, we received from Mr. Imparato the idea of that uh, we, we use in the future the same approach for other few off, one off, or cars like this. I think it, it can be really, really amazing yeah. because it's the way to represent in the best way our brand and also is the best way also to represent the dream of Alfa Romeo. Yeah. And this, I think, is uh, maybe the first I love that you've revisited your past and you've recreated it in a modern way. It's the, the, it's the entry point is very high. You know, it's somewhere approaching two million euros, I think is the number we're sort of discussing, You slightly less perhaps. But will we ever see coach built cars from Alfa Romeo at a lower pr price point? Or is they always going to be at that a high, very high level? They have to be, do they? But in reality, the intention is not to make only high-level cars oh, with okay. a so high price. This is, of course, something different because the number, 33, yeah. is, yeah. A, as I said before, is a mantra. So it, this was, from the beginning, the target of numbers oh. of cars. But for sure, we can produce more cars. Uh, maybe you remember, in the past, we did the DLC competition, 500 cars. Yes. Uh, on this, of course, the price will be different. Yes. For this car, we have a high price because the car, because the approach, because the unique, the unicity for a lot of pieces. But of course, if we jump in a limited edition where maybe the number will be more, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the, the price can go down. Oh, so okay. for this reason, again, this is an exercise. 
we don't know exactly the price of this car. You don't know exactly the price I of this know. car. I've been uh, trying all day to get the price <laughs> of this car. <laughs> but in the end, uh, our uh, mission will be to make something beautiful like this car and to repeat uh, uh, again what did in the past for right. Alfa Romeo wow. many times with uh, the help of many yeah. people. And also, not only an electric, but with normal engine, the V6 jet we, as well. Uh, well. And this, of course, as you know, the range where yeah. we can play of this is uh, shortly and more and yeah. more. Uh, but uh, also with the electric engine, uh, the intention is uh, to use the new technology in the right way okay. uh, and to make uh, again something uh, nice Very like special. This, uh, well it's great special. to see from Alfa Romeo and reinventing itself at, under Stellantis and doing these sort of vehicles and by uh, the way it's not easy eh, for a big company no. Stellantis to make an exercise like this yeah no it's good so thank you for that guided call you're I, welcome I'm ashamed that, that all 33 are now sold I'm always too <laughs> late for these things but uh, <laughs> Alexandra thank you ever so much thank you very much around. thank you thank you well, that was great to have the tour around the 33 with the designer responsible and part of the team is obviously a team behind this car but it's a very passionate emotional car for this guy to do at Alfa Romeo and I love the way it's actually going to lead on to more of this sort of coach built very special cars because an enthusiast who doesn't want to see Alfa Romeo doing these sort of cars and I love how they've actually worked to how this car is a usable car he was explaining as luggage in the front there is also luggage space in the rear as well and they thought about where they're going to put the number plate for instance and uh, they they looked at motorbikes for inspiration how it's almost isn't part of the body it's just put on there remotely from the body so you see the shape of the body underneath and that big rear diffuser so i like that about it as well and the, there's two things that's not spoken about as far as i can see is one is the price it was very frustrating but yeah they're all sold so they're saying they're all going to be customized they're all going to be it's all sorts of colors if you look over there there is a palette of colors initially they thought they'd just do the three colors and then they showed the car to clients and they all wanted oh is it possible to do this that color and that is what's going on over there i like the way also they've done the two interiors the sort of track orientated you were saying that there's a uh, one of the clients wants his car in bare carbon and it's something they'll be able to do so like pagani zonda used to do and you know on the wire you're going to have a bare carbon perhaps you'll see on a 33 to Starley in the future so all those elements owners fitted luggage as you'd expect the other bit that seems to be unspoken is how have they created this carbon tub car v6 um, engine and electric well there is another car in a scientist a lineup that has shares those components and that's the Maserati MC20 no mention of MC20 in this studio but I did notice there's a aero model car over there that's done all the wind tunnel testing if you look at the windscreen there is the trident on the windscreen there as well so think about Alfa Romeo what they've got in their museum what cars they could revisit what those wedges those Gandini wedge cars from the 70s I wonder if we're going to see any of those cars it was also interesting that Alexander hinted they're going to be a lower price point perhaps future cars they do a greater volume I think the way this car is instantly sold out and has a huge waiting list even though it's a two million euro Alfa Romeo so it's great news all around for them for us as enthusiasts so there you go I hope you enjoyed this video this specialist look of this very special car in the design studio here in Alfa Romeo in Turin. If you did, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.